very good afternoon to all uh, today we want to start our chapter 23 so today we will talk about uh, critical thickness of insulations uh, derivation of the equation for cylinders and spheres so critical thickness is a very important uh, parameters for uh, any kind of uh, heat pipes or any refrigerating uh, cylinders where actually heat loss is a prominent factor in order to minimize the heat loss, we generally uh, provide some sort of insulation surrounding the pipes. And uh, <clears throat> this uh, insulation thickness is also very critical. So we have to mathematically derive the expression in order to minimize, in order to find out where is the minimum heat loss happens. So the thickness up to which heat flow increases and then after which heat flow decreases is termed as critical thickness. So uh, it is a so initially what happens is that if you provide the insulation, the heat loss is going to increase. The point at which this happens is known as critical thickness. Beyond which the heat loss is going to be decreased. So the critical thickness is the minimum amount of, amount of thickness which must be provided. Okay. So critical thickness of insulation for cylinder, we're going to derive this expression as you can see. Uh, it is a cylinder is given by radius of R1 and surface temperature is given by T1. After which there is an insulation, the insulating material is having thermal conductivity K and the radius of the, the radius of the cylinder is given by R2. So the critical thickness or the thickness of this insulation is given by R2 minus R1. And outside temperature is given by T ambient, T air, and the convective heat transfer equation given by H0. That is the fluid which is flowing outside. So in order to in order to uh, know that derive this critical thickness of insulation, we have, we'll see that we'll consider the length of the cylinders capital L. Surface temperature is given by T1. H0 is the heat transfer coefficient at the outer surface of the insulation and K is the thermal conductive to insulating material. The rate of heat transfer from the surface of the solid cylinder to the surrounding is given by Q. 2 pi L T1 minus T L divided by ln R2 by R1 plus divided by K plus 1 by H0 by R2. So this is the expression for heat loss to the surrounding, right? So the first terminology is actually for the conductive thermal resistance and the second one is for the convective thermal resistance. So in order to know the critical thickness, what we have to do? We have to take the first derivative of the denominator and then set it at zero, right? Because as R2 increases, the first term, that is ln R2 by R1 by K increases. For the second term, 1 by H0, R2 decreases. So Q becomes maximum when the denominator becomes minimum. So we take the first derivative with respect to R, R2 and set it at 0, and then we derive that R2 is equal to K by H0. So that R2 is equal to critical thickness, that is K by H0. So that is the minimum thickness you have to provide in order to minimize the heat loss, right? So the expression, uh, the relationship we have derived is actually represent the condition for minimum resistance and consequently maximum heat flow rate. The insulating radius at which resistance to heat flow is minimum is called the critical radius. Right? Beyond critical radius, heat loss is going to be minimized. The critical radius dependent on the thermal quantity K and H0 and it's independent of R1 that we have seen. It may also be noted that the second derivative of the denominator is evaluated if evaluated will come out to be positive. We should verify that the heat flow rate with the will be minimum, will be maximum when R2 is equal to RT, RC. Now in the terminology ln R2 by R1 by K is conduct, conductive thermal resistance which increases with increasing R2 and 1 by H0 by R2 is equal to convective thermal resistance which decreases with increasing R2. At R2 is equal to RC, that is critical thickness or critical radius, the rate of increase of conductive resistance of insulation is equal to rate of decrease of convective thermal resistance, giving a minimum value for the sum of thermal resistance. There can be a two scenario. One scenario for cylinder's body, the R1 should be less than RC, right? The scenario given here, R1 less than RC. The heat transfer increases by adding insulation till R2 is equal to RC. So as you can see, heat transfer keep on increasing until R2 rc become r2 right if insulation thickness is further increased the rate of heat loss will decrease rate of heat loss is decreasing 
from the peak value until a certain amount of insulation denoted by R2 prime. This is the R2 prime, which is at B, B is added. The heat loss is still greater than the solid cylinder. The solid cylinder heat loss is given by this straight line. This happens when R1 is small and RC is large. R1 means the critical radius, sorry, radius of the pipe or rod or whatever, the material which are going to be insulated. Now, RC is the thickness of the So it happens when R1 is small and RC is large. Examples are the thermal conductivity of the insulation. So actually, it means that thermal conductivity of the insulation is very high. That is poor thermal, poor insulating material, right? And when H0 is low, the practical application would be insulating of electric cable, which would be a good insulator for current, but poor for heat. For cylindrical bodies, when R1 greater than RC, as you can see, R1 greater than RC, the heat transfer decreases by adding insulation, decreases by adding insulation. They happen when R1 is large and RC is small. Here, actually, R1 is small, RC is large. This is more standard condition. A good insulating material used with low K and H0 is high. In steam and refrigeration pipe, heat insulation is the main objective. So for insulating to the properly effective in restricting heat generation, the outer radius must be greater than that, equal to the critical radius. Okay. So R1 should be greater than RC or more. Let's look into the <coughs> example for critical thickness of insulation of a sphere. As you can see, uh, it's a sphere of having a uh, radius of R1 and temperature is given by T1. The insulating material is given by this blue line between this dotted red line and blue line, which is given by thermal conductivity K. Surface temperature is given by T here and thermal uh, A, convective heat transfer equation given by H. So the heat loss is given by this expression Q equal to T1 minus T here divided by R2 minus R1 divided by 4 pi K R1 R2 plus. 1 by 4 pi R2 square H0. Applying the same procedure as that of cylinder, we have we take the first derivative, set it at 0, and then we get R2 is equal to RC 2K by H0. That is the standard expression for critical thickness of a sphere. Let's look at uh, so that. So, we have first example calculate the critical radius of insulation for asbestos. Surrounding a pipe and exposed to room air at 300 Kelvin with heat, convective heat transfer equation given 2.8 watt per meter square Kelvin. Calculate the heat loss from a 475 Kelvin, 60 millimeter diameter pipe when covered with a critical radius of insulation and without insulation. So there are two scenarios, one with, with insulation, another without insulation. So first thing first, we have all the parameters given. We determine the critical radius, that is RC K by H0, given determine 60.43 millimeter. So if you have insulation, the heat loss will be 2 pi T1 minus T2 divided by Ln RC by R1 by K plus 1 by H0 RC. You can see that R2 is being replaced by RC because it is the critical radius. And then you derive that 110.16 watt per meter is the heat loss with insulation. If you don't have without insulation, then simple heat, convective heat loss happens. H0 2 pi R1 T1 minus T2 is given 92.36 watt per meter. Next problem, a 10 millimeter cable is to be laid in atmosphere at 20 C with outside heat transfer quotient 8.5 watt per meter square C. The surface temperature of the cable is likely to be 65 C due to heat generation within. Will the rubber insulation K, that is 0 0.155 watt per meter C, will be effective if how much? So you have to determine whether the K is sufficient and the second is how much critical thickness is required. So again, uh, <coughs> the radius of the cable given five millimeters, surface temperature, all the parameters given. To determine the critical radius, that is K by H0, given 18.235 millimeters. So if you have a rubber insulation, that, that thickness should be R2 minus R1 or RC minus R1, that is 13.235 millimeters. That will be effective in heat dissipation. The maximum heat dissipation per meter length will be Q max by L, 2 pi T1 minus TR, LC, then RC by R1 by K, 1 plus 1 by H0 RC. RC have no, R1 no, K no, so it will be how much will be the maximum heat get dissipation, that is 19.1 watt per meter. Next problem, a small electric heating application uses wear of 2 millimeter diameter with 0 0.8 millimeter thick insulation. The heat transfer coefficient at the insulating surface is 35 watt per meter square C. Determine the critical thickness of insulation in this case and the percentage change in the heat transfer rate if the critical thickness is used. 
assuming the temperature difference between the surface of the wire and surrounding air remains unchanged. So all the parameters are given. First, you determine R1, R2, and K. And then you, from this parameter, you determine critical radius K by H0. That is, so percentage change in heat transfer rate. The heat heat flow through the insulating wire is given by 2 pi L T1 minus T L ln R2 by R1 K plus 1 by H0 R2. So that we are just considering that R2. That is 1.8 millimeter. And you determine that that is the percentage heat loss. Now, if you, instead of R2, if you consider critical radius, then you determine the heat loss. So percentage increase will be Q2 minus Q1 by Q1, and that is coming at 11.6%. Very straightforward, very simple. Just look at the expression and solve. Next problem, similar type of problem. I think uh, I think uh, you just go through these slides. It is very easy. But again, I'll uh, <coughs> mention it. A wire of 6.5 millimeter diameter at a temperature of 60C is to be insulated by a material having thermal conductivity 0 0.174 per watt per meter. Convective heat transfer coefficient given 8.722 watt per meter square C. The ambient temperature 20C. For maximum heat loss, what is the minimum thickness of insulation? At heat loss per meter length, also find percentage increase in the heat distribution. So that minimum thickness means critical thickness you have to determine. R1 given, K given, H0 given. So critical thickness K by H0, 19.95 millimeter. So the critical thickness, sorry, R, critical radius is 19.95 millimeter. So critical thickness will be RC minus R1, that is 16.7 millimeter. Heat loss per meter length without insulation, 2 pi L, T1 minus T1 by H0 R1. You can give that is 7.124 watt per meter with the insulation or 15.537 watt per meter. So the change in percent in the insulation Q2 minus Q1 by Q1 percent. Next problem a represent suction line having a diameter 30 meter required to be thermally insulated. The outside air cream coefficient of heat transfer is given what 12. Watt per meter square C, the thermal conductivity of insulation is given 0 0.3 watt per meter C. So you have three determine, determine whether the insulation will be effective. Second, estimate the maximum value of thermal conductivity of insulating material to reduce heat transfer. And third, determine the thickness of cork insulation to reduce the heat transfer to 22% if the thermal conductivity of cork is 0 0.038 watt per meter C. So, first case, RO given. H0 a given K, K uh, of the insulation given. So critical radius RC K by H0, that is 25 millimeter. Now RO is, that is the initial uh, the critical radius, sorry, the, in, in, the radius of the refrigerant suction pipe is 15 millimeter, which is less than RC. Therefore, heat transfer will increase. That is the case, case one, right? If you remember, by adding this insulation, thus it will not be effective. For insulation to be effective, RO has to be greater than RC. So you Put this inequality is the values, and then you determine K insulation should be minimum. Minimum K thermal conductivity should be sorry, maximum thermal conductivity should be 0 0.18 watt per meter C, right? That is 0 0.1 watt per meter C. That is number two. Number three, consider any length of the pipe or base pipe that is the amount of heat loss H naught A delta T, H naught A, A to pi R0, A, area uh, area one, delta T is the temperature equal. For pipe with cork insulation, delta T divided by ln RC by R0 pi 2 pi K C1 plus 2 pi R C1 H0, right? Equal to 0 0.22 Q because it is given, given 22 percent reduce, right? 0 0.22, that's why. So you put all the value and then solve for RC, that is the cork, that is 36 millimeter. So thickness of cork insulation will be RC minus R0, that is 21 millimeter. Next problem, a uniform sheathing of plastic insulation is applied to the cable of 8 diameter. The convective film coefficient on the surface of the air cable as well as the insulated cable was estimated as 12.5 watt per meter square C and the surface temperature of 45 C was observed when the cable was directly exposed to ambient air 20 C. Determine the thickness of insulation to keep the wear as cool as possible. Number two, the surface temperature of insulated cable if the intensity of current flowing through the conductor remains unchanged. So as you can see from the figure, R1 is given 4 millimeter, K is given, H0 is given. Thickness of insulation, 14.4 millimeter. 
sorry, the radius of insulation 14.4 meter, thickness of insulation R2 minus R1, that is 10.4 meter. Surface temperature of insulated cable 10 T2 is given by. You have to know that the heat loss that is Q1 H H0 A delta T 7.85 watt per meter. Now, if I instead of insulated sheet, the heat flow is given by Q2 pi L T2 minus T20 1 by H0 R2 ln R2 by R1 T. So that is giving 0 0.49 T2 minus T20. So Q2 and Q1 should be equal, equalized, and then it's 12 for T2, you get 35.86 degrees. 